Okay, welcome back to Hangar 51. We're going to do the assembly now of the uh, the uh, FMS 1700 Corsair. And uh, I'm going to go over a couple bits first. Uh, first thing, tools you're going to need. You're going to need a 2mm uh, hex driver. And you're going to need a 3mm hex driver. Okay? And then the only other tool you're going to need is... And you may or may not need, but I would have one ready anyway. Um, some kind of piece of music wire with a loop on the end. And it'll be called a go get them wire. Uh, you may, I had to fool with mine, you may or may not have to pull the elevator wires back through the plane. I actually had to pull the rudder wire all the way through this way and pulled the elevator wire all the way out that way to get them loose. They were trapped inside the fuselage when they put it together. And then I had to pull the elevator wires back through with this, this way, and then the rudder wire from here back through that way, which took quite a while. So, uh, didn't want to have to put you through that because you, you should not have to do that. Um, so, but just in case, I would have one ready so that when you're ready to build the plane, you don't have to stop and go, oh crap, and then try to either go find one or just, just have one ready. Um, it's a simple piece of music wire. Any size will work. Uh, usually, uh, the smaller the better, but it has to be fairly long because this fuselage is pretty long. Um, this is one that came with a, a model kit in one of the planes I had bought, but it's, this wasn't long enough, so you may have to make your own longer. Okay, so going through the bag of bits, okay, um, there was a piece in there that looks like a motor mount. And I didn't understand what that was for because the motor's already in the plane. It's not a motor mount, it's the back plate for the, uh, the pr prop that you're going to assemble. And this is the, what they're going to use, all these uh, eight holes are drilled and tapped. And it fits into the back of this, just like this. Okay, and it's actually going to sit right down in it, flush. And the screws are coming through the other side and will thread into the eight holes. They're all threaded. And that's how you're going to tighten up the prop. Okay, so that's where that goes. I, I thought it was a motor mount. I'm like, I didn't understand what it was for, and then I figured it out. Okay, and then the other thing that's confusing is... The four wing bolts, which use the three millimeter screw, were in a bag with five of these 20 millimeter long small screws. And then there was a bag of eight 26 millimeter screws. Well, you're going to think, well, you know, okay, so there's eight of these. We need eight for the propeller, so obviously these are the eight for the propeller. No. <laughs> no, they're not. So. Just so you're clear, you're going to need four of the 20 millimeters and four of the 26 millimeters to assemble the prop. And then the other four 26 millimeters, three of them are going to be used to hold on the elevator because there's three screws that go through here. Um, they all go down through the top. One's right up here. Don't put the rudder on first. Put the elevator on first because after you put this on, you snap the rudder in place, which blocks one of the screws. So you have to put this on first. And you're going to put three screws, 26 millimeter long ones, down through the top, and then you can snap the rudder on. So that leaves you with one extra 26 millimeter and one extra 20 millimeter, which is common for FMS on these smaller screws. They usually give you an extra. So that's what you're going to have. So you're going to use 426s for the prop and 420 for the prop and then three of the four left to hold the elevator on of the 26 and then you'll be, end up with one extra 20 and one extra 26. And that's pretty much it guys. Uh, other than that um, it's just common sense. You know, the manual's very well written, and it's, uh, it's written in five languages. 
So it's very thick, but don't let that intimidate you. There's only about six or eight pages in each language. Let me look. Maybe ten. Well, a little more than that. Hang on a minute. So 15 pages in English is all you're dealing with. This here. All the rest of the book is different languages. French, um, De Denmark, I'm thinking, DE, I'm not sure what that is. There's DE, there's, there's FR, there's CA, uh, I'm sorry, CN, and I think those are the other languages. So, maybe uh, one, two, three, yeah, four languages including the English. But there's only 15 pages for each language, so you only have to worry about that. Um, very well written, so no, uh, no chinglish here. It's very well English. Great pictures, diagrams, no problem. So, okay, so I'm going to start with the prop. And, um, so I'm, and I'm going to use Loctite. And for you guys that don't, aren't familiar with Loctite, um, it eats plastic. And it doesn't eat it as in melt it. It makes it crumble. It, it makes it so brittle that it will just crumble. So you don't want to get this on any of the plastic bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just dab up a drop in each hole of this, wipe off the extra, and then put it in the back and start screwing the prop together. Because I don't want to put it on the screw and have the screw go through two layers of plastic and have any of this wipe off onto the plastic, which will, in a sense, eat the propeller hub and potentially make it come apart. So I'm not, I don't want to do it that way, so I'm going to do it this way. So I'm just going to put a little drop in each hole here. And you just need a drop. Okay. And I'm going to just drop that a couple times to shake off the extra and then wipe it off. Just leave a tiny little bit inside the holes, and that's all we need. I, I really want to limit how much how much of it touches the plastic. So we're going to make sure we wipe off all the extra. And uh, okay, and then we'll go ahead and put it in the little holder. Let me make I'm going to wipe off the edges too, just to make sure. Put this in here. Now the inside holes are going to be the long screws, and you want the. Uh, this is the back plate, okay? So you want the screws going in this way, with the props, you know, the yellow tips facing outward toward you. So you're going to have to put all of these on first, and you need the short ones first. Okay, so you put a short one together here with the outer holes. And I'm going to do this as quick as I can. So I'm just snugging them first. I'm not going to tighten them. And you want to work fairly quickly here, guys, because the uh, the Loctite will start to dry. 
so you don't want to you don't want to take too long. And I'm going to put the uh, the four extra. I'm going to put in the other holes, just for alignment purposes. While I tighten up the outer holes, so I'm going to go ahead and thread this in a little bit. You don't have to screw the inner ones in. Just get them in a few few turns is good enough. I just want to make sure that everything's perfectly aligned before I start tightening these up, so I don't have to fight them when it's uh, when I'm trying to put the hole the, the outer hub to the inner. I don't want to have to fight it. So we're gonna. Put the inner ones in just loosely for alignment purposes while we tighten up the outers because the hub covers the outer holes. So you can't you can't tighten them all together. It, 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 the outer holes get covered. So you got to tighten down the, uh, uh, the outer holes all the way first. And then when you put the hub in, the outer hub on, it covers up those holes. So you can't... Uh, you can't do them all at the same time. It's, it's a two-step kind of setup. And just get them good and snug. Don't, don't try to snap them off. Just get them good and snug. Between the being eight of them and Loctited, there's very little chance of them coming loose. So just get them good and snug. I have a tendency to over tighten everything. Uh, I'm trying to break that habit. <laughs> I'm not having a lot of success at it, but I'm trying. Okay, so let's back these screws back out. Now you put the outer hub on now. Make sure it snugs up good because you're not going to be able to, uh, you, you won't be able to, if there's a gap and you can't push it together, the screws won't do it. They won't pull it together. You just you'll snap the screws off. So 
make sure it it goes all the way together on its own. And if it doesn't, then you might have to do some work on the propellers, which looks like the situation might be what I have to do here. So we may cancel this and uh, finish this later because I can't get this to go all the way on. Yeah, sometimes there's some flashing on the blades and you have to uh, you have to work them a little bit, which looks like what's going on here. I can't get these to sit, seat in right. And I've learned over the years that if you try to use the screws to pull them in, there's a very good chance you're just going to snap the screw off. And then you're really going to have a problem. So don't try that. Make sure it goes together on its own. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. We'll, we'll work on that later. Um, I'm going to, I am going to pull those. I am going to loosen these screws, though. And I'll, I'll do some shaving on these blades to make sure they all fit. And then we'll do it again. So, we're not going to do that on camera because I'm not going to waste the time. All right. So now we're going to take three of these four long ones. We have one extra of these small 20, the 20 millimeter length ones. So we'll just set them aside. And then we're going to use three of the four long ones. So we'll set one of those aside. So here's my two extras right there. 120, 126. These three 26s are going to be used to hold this down. So I'm just going to plug in these uh, servo leads. And they have locks on them. This is a nice setup. You know, you don't have to worry about like shrink wrapping them or anything to keep them together because they have locks on them. So you should have no problem with these coming undone. It, when you when you put them in, they're going to snap into the locks and that you should be done. So double check, make sure you put them in the right way. Because you don't want to have to take this back apart after you lock it together. You know, you put all these screws in. You don't want to have to take it back apart. So push it in good and tight and make sure that the yellow, yellow matches yellow, brown matches brown. And uh, make sure they snap all the way in into the into the locking clevis. Bugger, come on. Now they didn't come taped together. I did that after I fished them. You know, since I had to fish them back through the whole plane, I went ahead and taped them together. And I'm going to leave them taped together because there's no reason not to. Um, just kind of keeps them a little neater. Okay, so they're locked into place. And double check them again. Check the color one more time. Yellow, 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 brown, brown, the brown, brown. Okay. All right, that looks good. All locked in. Good to go. Okay. So we're going to flip this over. And send these wires back through. And make sure that these wires stay underneath the... There's plenty of room in here. The cavity that they go into is plenty big enough for the wires to go down where they need to go. So you really shouldn't have to uh, pull the wires from the front. But you can if you, if you need to. But I don't think... Uh, yeah, that all set down fine. So yeah, we don't need a yank on the wires. They're fine. Then we're going to put these three in here. The 
other one, like I said, goes all the way up here in the front under the rudder. So you got to put this up first so you have access, and then um, you'll put the rudder on after the fact. The rudder just snaps on. It's a, a submerged hinge, so it's a snap-on deal. Nothing's pinched under here, everything's flushed up good. Yeah, that one looks good. Alright, let's tighten them up. Okay, so be careful on that back one here. Apparently you can over-tighten that one. Um, it's crushing the foam, wrinkling it up, and you don't want to do that. So don't get too crazy with this back one. Apparently it doesn't have a stop in it like the others. And uh, it was making it pretty bad. So um, yeah, just get this one kind of just snug and stop there. You know, when you start feeling some tension on the foam, that's tight enough. The front two seem to be all right. You can, you can kind of, you know, get on those tight, and that, that's all right. Okay, so there's only one control horn to deal with. One, uh, one of these uh, uh, ball links. Okay, and it's on the rudder. And like I said, the rudder has those submerged hinges. So the way these go on is you just push them straight on. you got to make sure, you know, you don't miss, because it'll go off to one side or the other. You know, you got to make sure you get right in the middle. And you, it's kind of a feel, you got to feel it. You know, you got to feel it, and then when you feel it, you push, and, it, and it, you'll hear it snap in. So, but you you got to get it in the center because it's real easy to miss it, go on one side or the other, and you think you've got it. But if you don't hear a nice click, then you didn't get it. Okay, there you heard that. Nope, missed. Okay. All right. So. And you can give it a good tug. Make sure it's on there. It's on. Because if you missed it, it'll come right back off. But once you snap it on, you should have nice free movement. And when you pull on it, it it's not going to want to come off. It's it's on there. So, okay. So we're good. So now we just have to hook up this one ball link. I don't know what the instructions say for what hole to put it in. Let me look real quick. I'm going to put it in the outside hole because I want as much throw as I can get. Um, but let's see what the FMS says. doesn't say but it looks like they're, it, they're showing it in the outer hole so 
I'd much rather have full throws mechanically. And then if I need to tone them down, I can do it in the radio versus doing it mechanically and then... Well, I take that back. Honestly, um, yeah, if you've got too much throw, fix it mechanically. So you have full range of the radio. Um, it's better that way. You get a more uh, linear movement if you're using the full length of the radio, the full throw of the radio, and limit it mechanically. So... So if we have to if we have to cut the rudder down, which I, I never cut the rudder down, I might do the elevator or the ailerons. But okay, guys, sorry about the uh, the video cutting off. The camera stopped. Um, I think the card got full. So um, you didn't miss anything really. I'm just gonna tell you all I had to do was slide the two wing halves together on the on the the uh, fiberglass spars and put the four bolts into the wing to bolt it on and then plug in those two connectors so that's all you missed everything else was already done um, this is the finished product um, got nice nav lights here we got landing lights on both wings all aluminum landing gear that you can see now in the, the picture there um, everything's bound up so yeah, we've got ailerons and we've got the elevator we got rudder and uh, flaps and uh, and then of course we got the motor so uh, so we're ready to fly it she's all good um, really no issues uh, everything went together great and uh, um, the only issue was, you know, I, I, and I told you that I had to fish those wires back to the tail. So watch out for that. Um, other than that, there was uh, nothing wrong. It, everything came together great. Um, great build. Beautiful airplane. Now, I have flown it, and uh, I've flown it quite a few times, actually. And she flies fantastic. So... Watch out for those videos. They're coming soon. You'll get to see some uh, flight video coming up. And uh, um, other than that, guys, I can't uh, I can't say enough good things about this airplane. You know, if you're looking for a big scale, beautiful Corsair that flies fantastic, this is the one. Uh, this is one of the def this one. And uh, you know, I gotta say, I'm gonna just throw it out there. My Banana Hobbies uh, Corsair with the folding wings. Um, I like both these planes e e equally but differently. They each have features I like. Um, I wouldn't say either one of them have anything I don't like, but uh, you know the other one has folding wings, and I like the color scheme better on the other one, although I do like this one. I'm not knocking it. I love this orange stripe, and I like the paint scheme, but I really love that two-color blue, white, off-white, scheme on the other one, the the, uh, the 1600. This one's bigger, it's more durable, the foam on the other one from Banana is a little uh, uh, more uh, delicate than this. This one can take a beating. You know, FMS foam is really rigid, so um, I mean it gives but it's firm, so it, it, it'll take a lot more abuse than the foam on the, the LX model one from Banana. But I love the the um, uh, I love the folding wings. I love the color scheme on the other one. I love the way this one flies. It looks fantastic. Again, this this push button battery bay here is fantastic. I love that. Um, there's plenty of room in there for a battery. My God, it's huge. And uh, yeah, like I said, it flies fantastic. And uh, it's, it's it's just a great airplane. Um, the, uh, the the build, like I said, the only thing you missed was sliding the two wings together and bolting them to the airplane. Four bolts. That's it. And then plug in those two single point connector wires, and everything came live. Everything works great. Um, you know, got the oleo suspension on the the retracts. 
And uh, I, I think those are working. Are they? Actually, they're not. They do work. There we go. Yeah. So, and they and they take the shock of my feel very well as I'm taxiing out. You know, the, the suspension's working. It, it's it's you know it's got enough heaviness to it that the suspension does do something. It doesn't just bounce around on hard hard legs. It's it's definitely working. So. Um, all right, so that's it. Um, like me here on uh, YouTube. Like me on Facebook. Comments at the bottom. And uh, we'll catch you on the next review. We're going to catch you on the flight review next on this one. So stay tuned for more. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.